Uh, okay, statement from you, Coach. Yeah, um, as always, and for anybody that's new, man, we always give the, give the most highest praise to God be the glory. Um, what a fun game to be a part of. Uh, really cool to see two teams that compete at a high level with two really passionate fan bases behind them to support them. I'm just thankful that we, that we came out victorious, really proud of our group. Um, because coming on the road in a in a Big 12 environment and getting a win like this, uh, it don't it just continues to establish the the things we want to do and who we want to be as a program. Okay, we'll open up questions for the players first. Leo Haggerty, Amped Up Sports. Two questions for both of you. After being snubbed by the NCAA, this was a statement game for you guys, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you say it. No, you say it. Somebody. Somebody. No, I mean, I mean, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing for us was, I mean, uh, yeah, we feel like we should have been in there, but, um, you know, we still, this is still a great opportunity for us, and um, I think that's just the biggest thing, you know, staying focused in, being in the moment, and, you know, still got a lot more games to go in. For sure, uh, we just gotta uh, share all the moments we got. Um, of course, it's a great opportunity here for us to keep playing, keep showing uh, who we are. Uh, of course, we wanted to be there, but at the same time, we're not going to keep our um, put our heads down. We're just going to keep going. Uh, we love to play. I mean, if we can win this, we're going to keep playing as a team. It's all about surviving and advance, isn't it, guys? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Any other questions for the players? You guys were very, for you, Jose, very proficient from the three-point line tonight. That may have been the difference in the game. You guys were 13-24. Just, could you just speak to how proficient you guys were from long range? I mean, I think that's just, uh, you know, coach instills that confidence in us. We instill that confidence in each other, um, you know, and ball movement, ball energy, and to just trust in each other. Like, you know, we talk about that all the time, like making the right play, playing for each other. <laughs> and then when we do that, you know, we tend to shoot the ball pretty well. Selton, how intense was it tonight? It looked pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was. Um... It was pretty intense. I mean, it's a, it's a rivalry game uh, from last year. We, it was 2-0, so we knew coming in uh, it would be a pretty intense game. Uh, I, I told Coach Amir, uh, we came in last year, and then we knew how it would be, so I told the guys, just keep your head up because you, you don't know what's going to happen. Just stay focused and keep playing the game. Something on that note, uh, there's a lot of new guys on your team, a lot of new guys on UCF that didn't play in these games last year. They're not as familiar with the Warren I-4. You're a guy that's been around a couple years. What did you kind of tell your teammates about this rivalry, and, and what was the experience out there playing these guys? Oh, I told them um, it would be intense, like I said before. Uh, I told them just be ready because you don't know like what's going to happen because it's just a rivalry. You see how USF has been, it's been like that for years. Um, my, our guys listening to, to me because I know I've been there. So we came ready to play, and then we just wanted to win. You guys had that, you know, big lead going into the half, but then in the second half, you know, UCF came back, cut up within two, and you know, it felt like it stayed that way forever. And but you guys managed to, you know, keep them from taking the lead and eventually rebuild that uh, large lead. What does that say about your team that you guys were able to handle that uh, offensive onslaught? I don't know if you see our season. Uh, most of the games it was almost down. We came back second half, so when we go down like that, we don't ain't no pressure. I mean, we've been there, so we just gotta we just stay poised. Uh, keep playing the, keep doing the same uh, game plan and distrust each other. Jose, you're from Orlando, coming back home. How important is it to win this game? Uh, I mean, I think, uh, I think it's important to win the game because, you know, we're trying to, like you said, survive in advance. But I mean, it is, it is sweet playing in front of the, you know, the home crowd. And I say home crowd because I'm from Orlando, but. Um, you know, uh, it, w it was pretty good though. It was a good show. You know, so SoFlo Rodeo. Shout out to SoFlo. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 awesome seeing you know looking up, seeing my family, seeing a bunch of friends that I haven't seen in a while. So you know, it's it, it was a cool moment. Sheldon, it's what five in the morning over with the watching. Yeah, game. basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they gotta stay up, but uh, a lot of family watching. Yeah, hey, they did. They did stay up. Um, a couple a people stay up. <laughs> a lot of people stay up. Um, <laughs> Like I said, my country um, supported me no matter what. Uh, they know we didn't go to NCAA, but they still su go support until, um, until we do this. So, yeah. You talked about your proficiency at the three-point line today, but you were also proficient over at the free-throw line as well, getting to the 22 compared to 
UCF's 12. I know UCF has kind of had that fear of the prom thing where they're trying to distract you as much as possible. Just what was your mindset getting going in the free throw line this time tonight? I just stay ready because, I mean, every practice we do a drill. After every practice on um, 21, we got to make 21 free throws before we leave practice. So we just got to stay ready and be ready to shoot when we come to the lines. Anything else for players? What, what's the biggest thing that you want to take with you from tonight as you move on to the next round? Uh, I mean, I think, I think we uh, just, you know, I think the okay. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like, uh, man, I would just say like, we gotta watch it and learn from it, and then um, flush it and move on. I think you know the biggest thing is, you know, breaking it down, seeing what mistakes we did, and then fixing those for whoever we play next. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, guys. I can hear you, Leo. You don't need that microphone. Coach, you know you're going to get these. Coach, two questions. Yes, sir. Every run UCF made, you answered. How proud are your guys of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of them um, because it's something that we've been talking about since last summer. I, I've told you this story before. You know, we we make our summer workouts in the, in the weight room. Um, very intense and every Friday we we go outside the weight room we find somewhere on campus in Tampa and we do what we call a Friday road game for nights like this where we take them somewhere foreign they hadn't they hadn't been they don't know what to expect um, and my strength our strength coach Cody DeQuitz he I think he's the best in the country you know because he's passionate he loves these guys he cares about them but man he comes up with some hellacious workouts right and it puts them in adverse situations that they have to depend on one another their response has to be good in order to get through get through it and nights like tonight where UCF who's a man they're a good team man they're well coached I think coach I think the world of coach Dawkins I truly do I know it's a rivalry but I think amongst you know coach to coach you look at how a guy runs a program and the success that they've had I'm the one thing I'm not is a hater like I'm gonna give props where props are due you know so to be able to respond in this environment against that team that coach man I'm really proud of them. and I'm proud of those Friday road games they're only gonna get a little crazier this summer coach at the park or the rec center yeah. All you say is who's got next. Does it even matter who shows up next? I said it on the radio, as the great Bart Scott said. Can't wait. Can't hey. wait. Hey. Was it Bart Scott? I'm right, right? Bart Scott? For the Jets? What wasn't yeah. that his last yeah. Bart Scott? Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Coach, in your first season as US head coach, you've already led this team to a postseason victory, the first in a while. Just so I just am curious personally, how does this win just feel for you? Um, to be honest, I hadn't thought about it. And again, I know you were UCF, so you hadn't heard this before. I'm one of 13 siblings, or you know, and, or kids. I I don't I can't talk about myself. It's like so, I don't think about the win for me as much as I think about the win for USF. The fact that until we get another game on the books, we got bragging rights for a while, right? And I I know President Law gets to call whoever the president is here. And, you know, have a good time with them, right? And give them a hard time. Uh, and, and I think about, again, our fan base. You know, I think about our fans being able to walk around and say, you know what, we beat UCF and Florida State in the same year. You know, it's a big deal for me because I want our fans to be proud of our university and I want them to love our program. And I think they do. Coach, how, how good did you feel or how confident did you feel in your guys down the stretch there the final two minutes when you knew it was going to come down to free throws as proficient as you guys have been from the line? Again, I, I felt really good because I, I tell them all the time, guys, your confidence should come from your preparation. It should come from your work. And these guys, they work, man. You know, um, we talked about we had to deal with some disappointment, like some real disappointment. You know, we've had some losses this year, and, and you got to flush those pretty quick, and you know you get another opportunity, right? But when when you work as hard as we worked and did the things that we did, um, and you don't get the invite to the tournament you wanted, you know, it, it stung a little bit. But as I told them, I said, look, guys, I told you a long time ago, I'm in the business of building men. 
all right, and how you handle disappointment, not just now, but how you handle it in your life is only going to determine this, the, the success that comes your way after that. So we got to deal with this disappointment, and the way we deal with it is we get back to work. We get back, and, and they came into practice, man. We didn't have to fight them on their energy, their effort, their enthusiasm. They were ready to roll. Coach, when you came in to coach this team, you weren't sure the next time to these two teams, this five where was going to get played again, being a different conference this tournament gave the opportunity to experience that rivalry and see the emotions that that rivalry can kind of, you know, elicit firsthand with some incidents on the court tonight. Just what was your experience out there seeing it, seeing the this rivalry kind of play out? You know, you hear people talk about rivalries, right? And and you really, I've been I've been some places before. You know, I spent some time as an assistant at Murray State, and people would talk about Austin P and Murray State, uh, how how it was a rivalry. That it was a real rivalry. Same with Western Kentucky, it was a real rivalry. Um, and so I've been at Texas A&M, right? And, and they, if you guys remember this, when Texas started the Longhorn Network or whatever it was, something happened where they stopped playing each other for a while. Well, it was similar to this. We ended up playing them in the Battle of Atlantis for the first time, I think it was like in seven or eight years. And it was a real rivalry. And I was, I was really excited to get, I just wanted to see how real the rivalry was. Oh, it's a real rivalry. And uh, I, I know Coach Dawkins and I, we, we said we'll talk and see if we can't figure out a way to keep it going. Because um, I think it's great for both teams. It's an opportunity for both teams to get a quality win. It's an opportunity for our fan bases to see great basketball. It's a, it's a great opportunity for the state of Florida, man. You know, uh, I, I get we're a football state. I'm not going to even sit here and act like we're not. But man, like think about the basketball in the state of Florida right now. I think it's pretty dang good across the board. You know, so if we can keep our rivalry going, um, you know, for the next few years, man, it, it'll be good for everybody involved. Coach, uh, when things got shippy, was there any way you can keep the composure uh, throughout the team? You know, it's like a catch-22. Um, because I, I want our guys to be tough, right? I, I, don't want, I don't want our guys to back down from anything. But as I tell them all the time, you know, I'm not young, but, you know, I, I, I try to stay young by being around them. And the, the great street poet Nipsey Hussle, he has a song called Double Up. And um, Dom Kennedy in that song, he has a, he has a, a bar in that song. I, it's, so, it's such a strong message. And I talk to our guys about this all the time. But the bar, he says, sometimes your response is the reason you exist, right? Like, you think about that. And I, and, I tell these guys all the time, man, like you're, they're going to go out, they're going to be college kids, right? But they have to have a certain level of emotional maturity to be able to make great decisions. So whether it's off the court, whether it's on the court, we got to have a high level of emotional maturity. And I'm on them about it all the time. You know, like if you ask them how many times <laughs> they had to run sprints for a lack of emotional maturity early in the season, man, they'd be like, they, they couldn't even count. Right. But our emotional maturity is is really good because we hold them accountable in practice, you know, because things get chippy in practice. We're, we're competitive. We want practice hard. So the game is not easy, but the game is we're, we're right at home with it. You know, it's 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 like practice. And if you'll fight your brother. Imagine what you'll do to the dude you don't know, <laughs> right? Thank you, Coach. So, Coach, uh, you said you and Coach Dawkins, both of you guys are on board. We're trying maybe to start a series beginning next season, I said we're going to talk. You'll talk. <laughs> yeah. we, I think we're going to talk. Okay, so <laughs> we'll it's see. not that advanced yet. Not that, not, yeah. not yet. Yeah, just what did you think of just the atmosphere? I know it's a late game. No, it was a difficult trip because being so late spring break. But what did you think of the you know, building? fans might get mad at me. My AD's back there. He might get mad at me. But it was, it was a great environment. But I'll tell you this. If you, come, if you would have been in that Yingling Center this year, oof. if this joint would have been in that Yingling Center tonight, oof, it would have been jumping. I'm telling you, it would have been jumping. But, no, it was a great environment, and who wouldn't want to play in it? Like, you know, I always say I, my fondest memories of basketball were high school when you had those real rivalries, you know, with the school 10 minutes down the road from you, you know. And like I'm from Georgia and I went to Wheeler High School and when you play Walton High School, man, like it didn't matter how good either team, it was, it was going to be intense. And that's what I felt tonight. And I think games like this prepare you for March. They prepare you for the NCAA tournament. So I think, 
you know, both both of us, both myself and Coach Dawkins, you know, we be doing ourselves a disservice to be able to to not play this game because it's easy travel too. You know, you're not really taxing your team's body, you know, very much um, traveling. You know, you're able to get back, and if you got a game in two or three days, you're able to get back, get you know, recovered, and go from there. But I think I think it's great for. I think it's great for both schools. I think it's great for our state. I, just, I think it's great for college basketball. I do. Anything else for Coach? Yeah. Coach, in November, you're 3-3. Three and three. Since December, you're 23-4. and four. Say, it, say that again. You're 3-3 three and three in November. You're 23-4 and four since December 1. Haven't lost a home game. What was the metamorphosis? What happened to change this team into the winner they are? Winning takes time. It doesn't always take three years, right? Not when, not when you can get a group of guys to trust each other, believe in each other, and get them to believe and trust in you. And that's what we were able to do. We're, we're very intentional about our relationships and our program. Um, we're very intentional about not letting things fester. If somebody has something to say, like it's an environment where they, they know they can say what they want to say, and not be judged for it, not be, you know, ridiculed for it or punished for it. You know, like seriously, like I'm not, like if, if they tell me I need to be better, right? And I know at times I need to be better. I'm not going to make them run 100 win sprints because they no, like if I'm telling you, if I'm asking you to be, you know, hey, you got accountability, you got to allow yourself to be held accountable. Well, I got to be the example of that accountability, right? And I tell him all the time, especially, you know, Chris Youngblood, he'll, if you ever see him come put his arm around me during the game, he telling me, Coach, you got to relax, all right? You got you to relax, all right? You're getting a little bit too caught up in the officiating. And I see why I got you, babe, right? But the metamorphosis was, again, we took a really tough loss at Hofstra, you know, an embarrassing loss. We didn't play, we didn't play very hard. Um, we didn't compete at the level that we wanted to compete at, that we should compete at. And then the next day we went to UMass um, to practice, not to play, to practice. And man, them dudes, man, they were chomping at the bit. And I thought that practice was the catalyst to the rest of our season. And I'm gonna just say this, I have to, because, and I'm 100% focused on the NIT and being the best we can be and being grateful for this opportunity, right? But I just think we gotta, and I say we as, collegiate sport we got to do a better job of understanding each situation we took over we took I say we my staff and I we took over a program we inherited a schedule we were only able to add I think it was three games to the schedule because there were already home and homes built in we were already playing in the Orange Bowl Orange Bowl Classic against Florida State we didn't necessarily have a chance to schedule right to put ourselves in a position that some of the other teams did but again since December what we're 23 and 4 December 1st. December 1st, we're 23 and 4. How, like, did anybody on the committee know that? Like, did they study that, right? And if they didn't, like, we got to be better. And I would be, I, I say the same thing for Coach Schertz and his crew at Indiana State, man. Like, like, what are we doing, right? Like, again, I have all the respect in the world for, for Coach Dawkins and his program. But we just walked into a Big 12, Power 5 school, on the road, and got a win. And so now we're 23 and... 23 and four since December. Man, what we doing? But you know what? It is what it is. Their fault, they don't get to see our brand. Everybody in the NIT does. Coach, this Last game, we talked about how this game has, you know, in a major sense of, you know, with the rivalry, how big it is because of the rivalry. But obviously this is the first game in a tournament. So how do you pivot from a game like this to uh, get to the next round against either Villanova or DC. Yeah, the, the season, it teaches you a ton of different things. I can remember playing uh, FAU. We played FAU on a Sunday, and, I mean, it was a great game, great environment, really emotional, high-level game. And then we had to turn right back around, I think, and we played that Saturday. And so we allowed them to enjoy it for, for about 24 hours, and then they got to flush it. We got to move on because, you know, we – who knows with the seating and however it goes, but whether we'll be at home or on the road, but you're going to get a good VCU team and a, and a national championship program team like Villanova. We got to flush it because we want to keep playing. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Absolutely.